Hey guys, welcome back to another custom keyboard review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at another budget custom keyboard from KVD Fans. This is the D60 Lite. It's a polycarbonate 60% gasket mounted keyboard from KVD Fans. And I know all of you are already asking, Hamaji, do you prefer the D60 Lite or the KVD 67 Lite? Watch the entire video and I promise I give a great breakdown on which one I prefer and which one I recommend you guys get. One thing I wanna quickly mention is that this is a prototype and KVD Fans has sent it to me, but it will not affect my review at all. Let's get started. The D60 Lite comes in the standard KBD Fans box, and it comes with a lot of accessories. Firstly, we have some KBD Fans screw and stabilizers, some PCB foam, some thick silicone gasket strips, a very flexible transparent polycarbonate plate, screws, and a screwdriver for the case. And of course, we also have the D60 Lite itself. This is the black version of the D60 Lite, and it looks pretty good. The polycarbonate feels smooth in the hands, and it has a nice glossy finish. The machining is also really well done. I don't feel or see any rough edges, and it feels really premium in the hands. And usually, I'm not a fan of transparent boards, but the D60 Lite does a great job of making it work in my opinion. The D60 Lite that I received uses a HHKB layout, but window keyless and normal layouts will also be available. The bezels on the board are a little bit chunky and are slightly thicker on the top and bottom. The board also has a 6 degree typing angle, and the side profile of the board is very minimal and clean. Each corner has been rounded off and the edges of the board have been filleted nicely. The D60 Lite also comes with a very thick silicone dampener. It adds a lot of weight to the board and it's one of the key factors to making sure that the board has a rich, full sound. So overall, the D60 Lite has great build quality and I am really happy with it. One feature I personally don't like though is the circular USB port on the left. In my opinion, it breaks away from the rectangular design of the overall board and I would have preferred if they just made it a rectangular cutout instead. But they did redeem themselves with the KBD Fans logo on the back. It has a nice bold font instead of that weird cursive font they had on the KBD67 Lite. The board also comes with the PCB. This is the DC60 RGB V2 window keyless. It has an ANSI layout with a split backspace and a 5 pin south facing switch configuration. It also has per key RGB lighting and the key binds can also be adjusted through VIA on your computer which is extremely convenient. So the first thing I want to focus on is the KBD fan screw and stabilizers. I am very glad that they're included and honestly, these are not bad at all. I've used them previously and as long as you mod them correctly, you can make them sound pretty good. The stabilizers, however, do not come pre-lubed or even pre-clipped, which is very disappointing, especially when you consider the fact that most stabilizers come pre-clipped now. The 67 lights also sets a really high standard for screw and stabilizers and this just feels like a little bit of a letdown in my opinion. So the first thing we have to do is snip off the two extra plastic bits on the bottom so that the surface becomes completely flat. I'm using plastic clippers which makes this a lot easier but you can also use scissors if you want. I highly recommend you do this if you plan on using the included stabilizers but if not you can also just get some Duroc V2 stabs which I also highly recommend. So once all of the stabilizers are clipped, we can install the Holy Mod. The Holy Mod is basically installing band-aids into the stabilizers to reduce rattle. I highly recommend you use the Holy Mod for KBD fan screen stabilizers. It gets rid of pretty much all of the rattle and it helps a lot, I promise. So the first thing we have to do is get some fabric band-aids, scissors, and tweezers. And after that, we have to cut the band-aids into a thin strip, which is just thin enough to enter the stabilizer stem, but also thick enough that it can cover the entire surface. And once you have a band-aid strip, we can stick that strip onto the tweezer and gently insert it into the stem hole and press down, making sure that there is no band-aid sticking out on the sloped end. Once it's secured, we can then move on to the other side. We have to cut off half of the band-aid that's sticking out and stick the rest into the hole below. And then we just repeat for the rest of the stabilizer stems. It looks really hard at first, but it's honestly really simple and I promise it's not difficult at all. And once you've holy modded all of the stabilizers, we can now begin lubing them. I like to lube my stabilizers with 205G0 instead of dielectric grease as it makes the stamps smooth without making them feel too mushy or sluggish. I start off with the housings, making sure to apply a decent amount around the sides, and then I lube all of the stems and insert them into the stabilizer housings. And finally, I lube my stabilizer wires one side at a time and then reassemble them once they're done. I put a pretty generous amount of lube onto my stabilizers, but I definitely recommend using very minimal amounts if you're new to the process. If you need a more comprehensive tutorial, check out my stabilizer modding video on the top right. I like to spend around 30 minutes or more on my stabilizers as they are the most important mod on any key Keyboard, so I want to make sure that they sound as good as possible.
So the board comes partially dismantled, which is very helpful for builders like me, but it does make it a little less accessible for newcomers. The top and bottom housing are screwed together via eight hex screws, which can be opened up with the screwdriver included in the D60 light. The next step is to install the gaskets. The D60 light comes with thin and thick silicone gasket strips, which are very different from the foam strips we usually see in premium boards. The thin gasket strips go into the short sides of the plate, and the thicker gasket strips are meant for the slot on the longer sides of the plate. These gasket strips are pretty effective, but they are incredibly annoying to install. I ended up just installing the thin strips into the housings because I had so much trouble putting them into the plate. The D60 Lite comes with 11 optional standoffs that you can install onto the plate if you want. The standoffs make the typing experience a lot stiffer and whether you install it or not depends on you. I'm going to try the board with and without standoffs to give you guys a better idea of how the standoffs affect the sound signature. Alright, now we can start installing the switches. So because the board uses a hot swap PCB, the process is really easy. All we have to do is make sure that the pins are straight, press it down and the switches are fully installed. And after that, we screw the top and bottom housings back together. One thing to keep in mind is that the case is made of polycarbonate, so I have to make sure that I'm not over tightening the screws or else it will crack. I'm going to try out a bunch of different switches. First up, we have the Boba U4s. These are silent tactiles with a 62 gram weight spring, so they're a little bit lighter than I would prefer, but I've never tried them before, so I'm very excited to see how they sound and feel on the D60 Lite. I also have some Glorious Pandas, and these are probably my favorite tactile switches on the market right now. They have a nice deep sound signature and are very satisfying to use. And to spice things up, we also have some linears. These are the 8008 inks, and they are recolored Gatoron inks with a Gatoron yellow spring, which is an amazing combo. These went on group buy quite a while ago, and they look absolutely amazing, and they should sound pretty good too. And finally, we can install the keycaps. I'm going to be using GMK Olivia because I think it goes perfectly with the glossy black design of the D60 light. So the D60 light I have uses a HHKB layout, so I have to use a 7U spacebar as well as a split backspace. It's the first time I've ever used either on a board so it was a pretty interesting experience for me and after using it for around a week i thought i would get used to it but honestly i'm still not a huge fan of how it feels i will always prefer a standard anti layout with any of my boards but i can definitely appreciate the compact nature of the design all right so what do i think of the board and how does it compare to the 67 light very quick disclaimer this is just my opinion on the board it is super subjective everyone's preferences are different i just want to let you guys know my take on the board and yeah <laughs> All right, let's start off with the typing experience. In my opinion, the D60 Lite feels better to type on than the 67 Lite. The D60 Lite has a slightly softer and more flexible typing experience and the gasket mounts just feel a lot better on here than it does on the 67 Lite. In terms of the overall layout and functionality, I will always recommend that you get a 65% over a 60%. A 65% board will still offer that minimal compact design, but you don't miss out on the arrow keys and the additional keys you can assign anything to. In terms of aesthetics, I would say that these two boards are really equal. This is a polycarbonate board, it's also glossy, it's also transparent, which is very different from the opaque minimal design of the KV67 Lite. So this one, I'll just leave it up to you. Let me know down in the comments below. In terms of how the keyboard sound, it really depends on what switches you end up using, but what I found is that the D60 Lite has an overall more poppy and slightly louder sound signature than the KVD67 Lite. So if I had to pick a keyboard just based on sound alone, I would probably pick the D60 Lite. I also want to talk about the price. The KVD67 Lite is, at the time of this video, 110 US dollars, while the D60 Lite is 120 US dollars. 10 US dollars isn't that much of an increase, but if you do decide to spend $10 extra, you get a technically better quality case with the injection molded polycarbonate instead of ABS. You also get a slightly better typing experience and sound signature, but you lose that functionality with the arrow keys and navigation keys. So in my very honest opinion, I don't think the extra $10 is worth it at all. I recommend that you just get the KVD67 Lite and you spend the extra $10 somewhere else.
Alright guys, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do consider subscribing and pressing the like button. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Homogeneo. Join my Discord server, discord.gg slash Homogeneo. Big thank you to all of my YouTube members. You can join by clicking join down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.